So good morning and good afternoon, bonjour, bon dia, to all the journalists joining us and to everyone watching online for this press conference on the vaccine rollout across the African region and continent. I'm very pleased to be joined by the Honorable Dr. Ozari Enahire, Minister of Health of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and by the Honorable Dr. C.D. Zahaf, the Minister of Health of Mauritania. Welcome, Minister. Bienvenue, Excellence Monsieur le Ministre. They will tell us about the COVID-19 vaccine rollout in their countries. But first, a look at the latest on Africa's COVID-19 pandemic. Africa's third wave is at a crossroads. Following eight consecutive weeks of a fast-moving surge, the rate of new cases slowed down, falling by less than 2% last week, driven by a sharp drop in South Africa, which accounts for a third of the continent's reported new cases. Yet, removing the data from South Africa reveals a uniquely steep and unbroken nine-week surge that's currently, that's already 80% higher than Africa's previous peak. 21 countries are experiencing a resurgence. That's three more than last week. The gains in South Africa are also uncertain as the country has been grappling with violence and protests. These have disrupted key response activities such as surveillance and testing. There are also real concerns that the mass gatherings could trigger another rise in cases in South Africa. There have now been more than 6.2 million COVID-19 cases and over 159,000 people have lost their lives. Deaths have also declined by 3.5% over the past week, but a tracker published by the non-profit group PATH finds that 13 countries have seen their oxygen requirements increase due to a surge in cases. Let us be under no illusions. Africa's third wave is absolutely not over. The small step forward offers hope and inspiration, but must not mask the big picture for Africa. Many countries are still at peak risk, and Africa's unprecedented third wave surged up faster and higher than ever before. The Eid celebrations, which we mark this week, may also result in a rise in cases. We must step up surveillance and be prepared. We must all double down on prevention measures to build on these fragile gains. And countries must prepare for an increase in cases, especially severe illness, and what needs to be done to limit people dying. Turning to COVID-19 vaccines, Africa continues to lag behind, sadly. Just 20 million Africans, or 1.5 million, 1.5% of the continent's population are fully vaccinated so far. Just 1.7% of the 3.7 billion doses given globally have been administered in Africa. Yet Africa's supply e crunch is starting to ease. The first delivery of doses donated by the United States government through the COVAX facility are arriving in Africa this week, and altogether nearly six, 60 million doses are expected in the coming weeks through COVAX from Team Europe, UK, purchased doses, and from other partners. African countries must go all out and speed up their vaccine rollouts by five to six times if they are to get all these doses into arms and fully vaccinate the most vulnerable 10% of their people by the end of September. Around 3.5 to 4 million doses are administered each week on the continent but this needs to rise to 21 million doses each week, at the very least, to meet this goal. Over half a billion doses are expected through COVAX alone this year, and a massive influx means countries must up their game. To increase uptake, countries need to scale up operations, investments on operational costs, and address vaccine confidence. Countries need sufficient vaccine sites and healthcare workers sufficient vaccine storage, and adequate transport and logistics for distribution. WHO is working with countries to better plan and cost operational plans and delivery processes to support the second phase of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Vaccines are key to saving lives and blunting the pandemic, 
but we must remain focused on controlling the disease until vaccination coverage is increased. So we encourage everyone to protect themselves, their families, loved ones, and those around them by wearing masks, keeping a distance, and practicing hand hygiene. The public health and preventive measures are key to ending this pandemic and saving lives. I look forward very much to our conversation with the two honorable ministers today and with you, and I thank you once again for having joined us.